self-defense isn't just for self, right? And even though it's a weird way of saying it because the beginning of the phrase is self-defense. So defense isn't just for you is a better way of saying that. What we saw in Kansas City, Missouri, was a, a young woman who was placed in a defensive scenario. Some of the backdrop, and this backdrop is coming from secondary sources, okay? Um, and I'll do maybe some more content and explain to people what a secondary source is, not a primary source. I thought before I got to the primary source, which is in this scenario will be the actual police report, I thought it would be very important to talk about the secondary source information because it's a very serious topic. If you guys aren't aware, there was a young woman, they you know, have not released her name as of yet, that shot a firefighter that was choking her boyfriend in front of a, let's say, an A-plus or a gas station parking lot, okay? Here's the backdrop from secondary sources. Young man goes into, last name Taylor, goes into a convenience store at a gas station. They don't have the cigars he wants, swishes, Dutch, whatever he smoked. He allegedly gets into it with the clerk behind the counter. Um, the clerk, after being yelled at, tells the young man Taylor to leave. In that engagement, he's going back and forth with the clerk. Fireman decides to intervene. Words are exchanged. He backs up the clerk and says, you got to get out of here. Taylor, young man, leaves. Fireman leaves as well. They're now outside. They're arguing back and forth. At some point, Taylor retrieves a firearm. In that process, somehow, Taylor and fireman get into a fight. Firearm is lost, or some stories say that the Taylor gave the young lady the firearm and said, shoot. Again, this is a secondary source. But the gist of it is, the woman now has the firearm. The fighting is continuing to ensue. Fireman is on top of and choking Taylor. Now, I want to stop there for a second. At the end of this video, I'm going to put the video up so everybody can see exactly how this video plays out, the short portion of the video. Secondary sources have said that there's about 10 minutes of video, which leads to question jumping out there before making statements saying, this is the context that we have, as well as we are getting this information from a secondary source. Very important context to have. I'll put the video that's circulating the internet at the end of this video. Some of the things that I'm saying is from reading multiple sources. And what we have not saw is what was said in that video that's gonna be at the end of this actual breakdown, okay? And I'm saying that because I want people to be clear. Not only is this about self-defense or defense, and you know, use of force and continuum of force and scenarios that can be weird, which is a lot of context. This is also about what you see, what you're allowed to see, what footage comes out later, the difference between primary source as well as secondary source. All of this is important if it seems like it's a little bit all over the place right now. So just wanna add that in there. If the woman sees her boyfriend being choked out on the ground, the boyfriend no longer has a firearm. She's in a predicament. Her predicament is to determine, can I get this man off of my boyfriend? Because I think he may be getting choked to death. The internet goes in an uproar because the district attorney decides to not charge this lady who does fatally shoot the fireman. Off-duty fireman. Have to add this. Taylor, the young man being choked, is a felon. Context. Some of those same accounts have said that this fight ensued for almost 10 minutes. If we've seen a few minutes of the fight and she's repeatedly asking the fireman to stop, please stop, hitting him, attempting to hit him, trying to pull him off, showing him the gun, I have a gun, I will shoot, doing all of those things and then winds, winds up shooting him and unfortunately the fireman dies, who's wrong here? The internet is jumping up and saying she's absolutely wrong because she must have known that the, her boyfriend was a convicted felon. She must be an accessory to murder. The only reason why she hasn't charged is because it's a leftist thing and she doesn't, the leftist district attorney doesn't want the city to burn. What's missing from all of this is people actually going to what the code is in regards to use of deadly force in the state of Missouri. 
The internet can tell you a bunch of Twitter lawyer things, but let's read the actual Missouri law on use of deadly force. I have it right here. 563.031, use of force in defense of, per of persons. A person may, subject to the provisions of subsection two of this section, use physical force upon another person when and to the extent he or she reasonably believes such force to be necessary to defend himself or herself or a third person from what he or she reasonably believes to be the use or imminent use of unlawful force by such other person. Unless the actor was the initial aggressor. In this scenario, the young lady is not the initial aggressor. She's a third party. She's a person that's somewhat aware, but if she was in the vehicle, she may not even know the context of how this turned into a fight. All we do know is she sees her boyfriend being choked, and under those circumstances, she believes that is an imminent threat to his life. Somehow she gets the firearm, she issues commands, she yells, she stop, tries to stop. The, the fireman choking, Taylor, does not stop. She fears that this could cause him grave bodily harm or injury or death, so unfortunately she shoots. Let's go further with Missouri law. He or she has withdrawn from the encounter and effectively communicated such withdrawal to such other person, but the latter persists in continuing the incident by the use or threatened use of unlawful force. In this scenario, she's asked fireman to stop. Fireman is not a police officer, is not charged. There is no felony actually happening. There is no robbery happening. There's no rape. There's no shooting. There's no any of that. Fireman follows Taylor outside and they start fighting outside. Talking about firearms ownership without talking about conflict resolution is a recipe for disaster. If you're frustrated about how someone is talking to a clerk, and even if that person is being a jerk, you are not obligated, nor should you, escalate that conflict. You shouldn't. I carry a firearm everywhere I go. If I see people arguing, I step back. My firearm, my involvement, is only there to defend life. This particular fireman in this scenario, this fireman seems to have wanted to defend the clerk who was a female behind the counter and continue to let this escalate. If the woman that sees this when these two men are fighting outside, the girlfriend recognizes this and asks that man to stop. She's not the initial aggressor. She recognizes a threat to life. She has asked and issued commands for the fireman to stop. The fireman has involved himself outside of the area. Taylor was no longer, wasn't illegally trespassing because he was already outside. She somehow now comes across a firearm, whether that's Taylor gave it to her, Taylor told her, they were fighting, he dropped it, doesn't matter. She fits the requirements of a third party that is justified in using deadly force to stop lethality, grave bodily injury, or harm. But let's take it a step further. He or she reasonably believes that such deadly force is necessary to protect himself or herself, her unborn child, or another against death, serious physical injury, or any forcible felony, met that criteria. Now, it sounds like I just repeated what I just said because I did, because we have what we could view something as and we have what the actual law is. And in this scenario, this young lady, the third party, was not charged. Oh, that guy was a scumbag, he was a felon. Firearm, excuse me, fireman was not aware of this guy's legal standing. Wouldn't have mattered. Oh, that guy's a, if he didn't start the fight over the cigars, then the fireman wouldn't have had to intervene. Fireman had no obligation to intervene. Oh, man, she should be charged as an accessory because she knew that he was a felon and she knew that he started the argument. She was in the vehicle. Fireman and Taylor were in the location. They both came out. She recognizes this, not knowing 
the start of the confrontation, all she sees from her vantage point is firemen and her boyfriend fighting. Many conservatives are politicizing this very clear thing, which is very strange, strange sarcastically, because we always say we don't want the left to politicize a shooting or politicize a thing. We've argued that the George Floyd case was politicized, the George Zimmerman case was politicized. And all over social media right now, I'm seeing a bisms. of people politicize this with the what about -isms. Well, if she was white and the dude was this and what about -isms are not how cases are brought or cases aren't even brought. They look at the facts, they look at the multiple camera angles, they look at the evidence and a decision is made. The what about -isms about what if this woman and the fireman was black and all of this other stuff is a what about -ism. that means you're politicizing it as opposed to or racializing it as opposed to looking at the facts at hand and looking at the actual laws. What I just read was Missouri's laws of if you go to jail for using deadly force or if you don't. The criteria has been met. Because we don't like extreme leftist policies or politicians doesn't mean that this is exactly what happened here. The argument that the only reason why this woman wasn't charged was because the DA didn't want the city to burn. These are all what's called speculation. These are not facts. We have to make sure that we're not politicizing the scenario because we don't like the district attorney and in the same process showcasing our own bias, bigotry, that we're calling justice or a travesty of justice. Clearly, this young lady was well within her rights to defend life, not just hers, someone else's. She gave ample time for this fireman to stop choking her boyfriend and unfortunately it ended in his death. With all of that being said, I wanna touch base on something very quickly and briefly. The young lady that had to defend life and unfortunately had to take life, that's not an easy task. That's something that she'll have to live with for the rest of her life. It's not, it's not okay. It's not funny. It's not, that's what the white guy gets. None of that. It's not okay. The fireman that lost his life, his family has to deal with that for the rest of their lives. That's the reality. It's not okay. It's not funny. It's not, he got what he deserved. No, he's a human. This is why our work at Black Guns Matter is not only about training for firearms and stop the bleed and so forth and so on. It's also a class in de-escalation and conflict resolution. Do not intervene in scenarios, especially if you don't have a firearm or don't train with a firearm. Do not intervene in scenarios that you can just walk away from. If this fireman would have walked away, he would be alive today. Other side, arguing about cigarettes, cigars, and escalating a situation to the point of going to a vehicle to get a firearm is not conflict resolution or de-escalation. He's still in jail because he was a felon in possession of a firearm. Whether he gets out, whether he'll be charged with different things, because that conversation about him is an entirely different conversation. We're just talking about the young lady who's now placed in that scenario because of her boyfriend's heightening of the issue instead of walking away. This is what creates the space for ignorance, violence, and unfortunately death. And this is why our work at Black Guns Matter is very, very focused on de-escalation and resolving conflict. That is 100% the best way, whether you are armed or if you are not. If you would like to donate towards our work to prevent against these types of scenarios, this is met with and beaten with information and education and training. You can go to givesendgo.com forward slash solutionary. We give these classes around the country for free to all. This is a very important topic. 
I'll, I'll make sure that I continue to study some of the source material because I think it's important as more information is available or more access to the source material. But I thought this very important to discuss right now because there's a lot of misnomers around this topic, okay? Anyone dying because of this misinformation or escalation is not okay. We need to do all we can to inform as many people as possible on what to do in these scenarios, and that is our work. Givesengo.com forward slash solutionary. My condolences to all of the people involved in this scenario. Let's learn from this. Let's continue to get more information. Be safe. Be solutionary.